Welcome to another SuGMC Tech video. Today I'll be conducting the review for the 4GB kit of Patriot Viper Extreme Division 2 Edition DDR3 1600 memory. Now first off, you'll have to forgive me. I know I sound probably a little more drained than usual, but I've been helping my sister who just bought a house, her first house, I've been helping her fix it up. So I'm a little bit cashed out. But moving on to this Patriot memory kit, the stock timings are 89824, and that's at 1.65 volts, whereas normally P67 ready memory kits will have 1.5 volts. And don't worry, I tested to see if that's applicable to this memory also. I have to tell you, I was digging on the design of the Patriot Viper Extreme Division 2. I go for the kind of gold and black and green that's in there. Sort of reminds me of an old school OCZ Reaper kit. But yeah, the heat sinks are much shorter than the Corsair Dominators I have, which is an advantage because it provides a little more compatibility depending on what motherboard you have. Sometimes when using a push-pull on your CPU heatsink, really tall heat sinks on your memory can at times get in the way. Now, as I mentioned in the unboxing, I ran some benchmarks with the Patriot Viper Extreme against my Corsair Dominators at 1866 and also 1600. And then I threw in some G-Skill Ripjaws X at 1600 and 1866. Now those I just happen to have here. What's undisputable according to my testing is that the Patriot memory is actually more stable with tighter timings and a little bit higher speeds than the Ripjaws. I actually was able to get the Patriot stable at 1.5 using mem test at 1600 because as I mentioned before, the 1.65 is just a flexible specification. It's not like you have to stay there. And then actually just bumping the voltage up to 1.6, I was able to tighten the timings down to 78721, which is pretty dang impressive considering the rip jaws didn't even post when I tried knocking the timings down like that. Now remember the dominators I have is eight gigabytes worth, four gigabytes each module. So it's not a static comparison, but it's fun to compare nonetheless. All right, benchmarks I conducted are ADA64, which used to be Everest, read, write, copy, latency. And then I ran the WinRAR benchmark. Many people don't know it. There's a benchmark in WinRAR. And then I also ran SuperPi32M. So here's the results for it. So I think you should agree with me that I am thoroughly impressed with this Patriot memory kit. Not only was I able to get it stable at 1.5 volts, 
was 1600, but I was able to crack back the timings to CL7 and still run it at 1.6 volts at 1866. And you should know that I did not use those Dominator fans, so there wasn't any sort of artificial cooling going on. Now retail, this particular Patriot is only going for between $70 and $80 right now, which considering their performance is an absolute steal. Believe me, I think Patriot could probably get away with selling this for about $100. So it'd be my recommendation that you snap it up if you see it. Unless you're like me where you do things like video encoding, you know, DVD ripping, things like that, and you need more than four gigabytes worth. And also, I don't want to occupy all four of my DIMM slots, because that can be crippling to your overclocking capability. With all that in mind, and considering that this is a full $20 to $30 less than the G-Skill Ripjaws X kit I compared it to, my final verdict for the Patriot Viper Extreme Division 2 is that it's an a run out and buy it product. Until next video, ladies and gentlemen, talk later.